So one thing that I think is really important to note with regard to the post row era that we will soon be entering in is that it is the case that women in blue states will still enjoy bodily autonomy. The problem, however, is that the GOP has already vocalized their intent to make that right temporary. Now, prior to the Roe leak, the GOP made it clear that they're not satisfied with abortion being a state's rights issue, and they fully intend on introducing a federal six-week abortion ban once they retake power. Now, this isn't something that they can do in the short term. If they take back the House, they can introduce and pass a bill, but Biden can still veto that. But in 2024, if they're able to win back the White House and have control over Congress, well, they can pass a federal six-week six abortion ban and assuming these blue states challenge it, which they will, it can go all the way to the Supreme Court. And do you know what the Supreme Court can do? They can say, yeah, this federal six-week abortion ban is indeed constitutional. They are very ambitious, and it doesn't stop with rights for women, because uh, that's just really the tip of the iceberg. When it comes to marriage equality, in this opinion, Alito said very clearly that he's targeting Obergfell v. Hodges and Lawrence v. Texas. Now, for those of you who don't know, Obergfell v. Hodges was the case that claimed there was a constitutional right to same-sex marriages. Lawrence v. Texas just claimed that it's legal for consenting adults to have sex with each other, even if they're of the same sex. In this draft opinion, Alito made it very clear not for long, as Jennifer Bendery and Igor Bobik of HuffPost write, conservative justice Samuel Alito, who authored the draft opinion, also specifically criticizes the landmark civil rights cases that legalized marriage equality, Obergfell v. Hodges, and that legalized private consensual sex, Lawrence v. Texas. Referencing these two cases, Alito eerily says that like abortion rights, none of these rights has any claim to being deeply rooted in history. Both Alito and Justice Clarence Thomas have already publicly called for revisiting same-sex couples' constitutional right to marry. In October of 2020, they described the court's 2015 decision on marriage equality as putting a novel constitutional right over the religious liberty interests explicitly protected in the First Amendment. By doing so undemocratically, the court has created a problem that only it can fix, Alito and Thomas said at the time. Until then, Obergfeld will continue to have ruinous consequences for religious liberty. That Alito is now tying his criticisms of marriage equality to an actual draft court opinion opinion to overturn a 50-year precedent on abortion rights should be a blaring siren for anyone concerned about constitutionally protected LGBTQ rights. So they're very, very clear. Don't be surprised when marriage equality gets overturned. Now, journalist Mark Joseph Stern pointed to the provision in this draft where it lays that out. He says Alito's draft opinion explicitly criticizes Lawrence v. Texas legalizing sodomy and Obergfell v. Hodges legalizing same-sex marriage. He says that, like abortion, these decisions protect phony rights that are not deeply rooted in history. So the ultimate goal isn't just to make same-sex marriages illegal again, but it's also to make sure that being gay in and of itself is illegal because now more people are out than ever. So before with Lawrence v. Texas, it was difficult to enforce these anti-sodomy laws, you know, because how can you tell if consenting adults are doing something that's illegal in the privacy of their own homes? But now we've progressed in society. Same-sex couples are married, so they can easily become targets if sodomy is uh, outlawed. And just to be very clear, sodomy isn't just anal sex. It also refers to oral sex. This is something that would affect straight people potentially as well, but we all know that that's not the way that this will be enforced. It's exclusively going to be enforced against same-sex couples. They want to make sure that gay people go back into the closet, and they do this by making them afraid to come out, knowing that they could be prosecuted in the event um, somebody says that they're having consensual sex. That's where we're at in 2022. But it's not just same-sex marriage and gay people who they want to eradicate from existence. As Chase Strangio points out, if you are out here saying marriage equality is next, please do keep in mind that at least one state has made care for trans youth a felony right now and is currently in court defending that law. There is no next. The horror is now. And if that case makes it to the Supreme Court, take a guess as to what way they'd uh, rule. And, um, you know, in Texas currently, Republicans in that state who are in control have made it so that way if you have sought out gender from a care for your trans child, they're going to treat you like a child abuser and potentially take your kid away from you. There have been parents who've gotten knocks on their doors from Child Protective Services because 
They were public about their advocacy for their trans child. They love their trans child. And for that, they're being treated as criminals. Understand that this isn't just the social conservatism that we saw before. This is an outright witch hunt against marginalized people, against women. This is fascism. And it's come to America. It's not coming to America. It's here right now. And the fascists are in control. They control the Supreme Court for a generation or two. So anything that Republicans want to pass when they retake control of the White House and the House and the Senate, that can be affirmed as constitutional by the Supreme Court. So this is just the beginning. It's going to get a lot worse. And for now, you're protected if you live in a blue, in a blue state. But... That's not going to be the case forever because they have long-term ambitions. But if you're in a red state, I don't know what to even say. I mean, I want to tell you to move if you can, but moving is something that requires capital. It requires money. So it's, it's easier said than done to just pick up and move because your government is doing a witch hunt against you and your kid. Of course, these people would want to move if they had the ability to do that, but they can't do that. So I don't know what has to take place. There has to be some sort of a network that we set up so we can fund these families to get the fuck out of these red states that are now hunting them down because we are in a fascist state. And it's not stopping there. Don't be surprised if they start targeting Loving v. Virginia next. GOP Senator Mike Braun accidentally, quote unquote, accidentally claimed interracial marriages should be a state's rights issue. So that was the first signal. Now he talked about how he misspoke. Maybe he was just testing the water. I'm not sure. But don't be surprised if the logic that they use to repeal women's rights uh, marriage equality, trans rights is also applied to uh, undue interracial marriages as well. And, you know, people uh, online, conservatives are pointing out, oh, well, why would Clarence Thomas do this? He's in an interracial marriage with a white woman. I mean, first and foremost, Clarence Thomas is a psychopath. So I actually believe that he would literally vote to end interracial marriage, even if that you know, hurts his marriage. Like, I actually think he's that psychopathic. Not even kidding about that. But additionally, they have, um, you know, a six vote majority. So Thomas can abstain. He could not vote in that. And it could still go through. Like, you have no idea how low they will go. Remember when we were wondering how, uh, when they talked about making America great again, what era they were specifically referring to? We're getting a better sense now as to what era they want to go back to. And, you know, this would all be an issue in and of itself if we had strong opposition. But the Democratic Party has vocalized their intent to do nothing. I mean, some of them are saying, yes, let's codify. Let's codify Roe v. Wade. And that's really important, right? But for the most part, you still have them saying, make sure you vote in 2022. You're in control now. Use every power imaginable, everything that you have, the bully pulpit, media power, carrot stick, throw everything at the kitchen sink. You can't just tell people to vote after they did that and you have a majority now. Yes, you have Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin and they're effectively Republicans. But that's why you fight. You don't just say, man, really hope we uh, widen our majority in the Senate so we can do something. No, you do something right now. But we have feckless leadership. Joe Biden's response has been pathetic. So, you know, Republicans continue to take our country back make it more ruthless and barbaric as other countries are progressing forward and de Democrats do fuck all about it. So we are in such a terrible situation. Uh, I don't know how we go forward as a country. We're looking at two different Americas, blue America and red America, where red America resembles Gilead from the television show Handmaid's Tale. And blue states are comparable to, um, uh, I guess other developed countries, excluding the universal health care and whatnot. But I mean, how do we go forward as a country when we have this fringe minority imposing their will on all of us? In every single state, including red states, people support the right to an abortion. And still, the Supreme Court, in a giant fuck you and a dismissal of 50 years worth of precedent, decided to undo that, do the unthinkable. It is going to get very bad and scary in this country. And so buckle up. We're going to have to take to the streets, even if it's frustrating because as the George Floyd protests kind of proved to us all, you know, even if you catalyze this worldwide movement and you, you know, you march for months and people across the world march, still nothing might not happen. But I mean, if they're going to make our lives hell, we've got to at least make their lives hell and protest every single fucking day because there's nothing left that we can do. A minority of religious fundamentalists have taken over and they are imposing their theocratic, fascistic will on all of us. And I'm not going to take that shit lying down. Fuck that.